Twitch is regressing it. Chat is Twitch is regressing or what? Everybody was older than me. Get into an Uber, the driver's probably older. Start a new job, my coworkers are probably older. And if I watch the NFL and I see a quarterback on my damn TV, he's probably older. Those times have changed. Patrick Mahomes is literally young. You see the lyrics ended on her podcast and said she's not signing an exclusive deal with any platform. And then she followed up and said Twitch has regressed a bit and that's why she doesn't want to be exclusive there or put as much energy into just streaming. She's called it messy. We kind of dug in a Twitch bit there. <laughs> but it's true. We haven't seen these huge exclusive deals, the ones that I used to talk about all the time, like XQC signing a $100 million deal in a while. In fact, Wait, think back that to wasn't the last either. YouTube exclusive streamer. Like, who got... They're trying to do the opposite. Dan Clancy, the CEO, said at TwitchCon, Today we are taking it a step further and announcing that we are allowing simulcasting months. on any live streaming service. Their whole philosophy has been, Hey, we don't want to sign nails, anyone exclusively. We want to just have people stream on all the oh, platforms as possible, and we think our platform is the best, so people will go to us anyway. The only people who have been signing exclusively has, of course, been Kick who have signed quite a few people exclusively. I believe the last one that I can remember was Nick Merckx. It isn't because of live streaming itself has slowed down. I mean, quite the opposite. In the past year, it's been doing better than, than really since COVID, right? If we look at this, January 2023, we had 2.4, almost 2.5 million average concurrent viewers. Now we're up to 2.6 with also more live streamers. So, so it's, it's quite a healthy scene. But why aren't people signing exclusive contracts anymore? What happened to these 10 million, Chat. 5 Hold million, on. 100 million dollar deep platform? Twitch literally cut one third of its staff. So it doesn't make sense to start paying for exclusive content because it hasn't really shifted on who has a majority in the live streaming space. And Twitch's philosophy of, well, hey, we don't need to sign anybody because people just think we're the best platform and we'll stream on our website has somewhat held true. I did a survey and I asked 30 of the biggest streamers in the world what the best streaming platform was. 28 said Twitch, one said YouTube, and one said multi-streaming. Nobody said kick. To be fair, maybe I didn't ask the right crowd. But the fact remains, I think that era is gone. And I think that because YouTube has even said to me, hey, we're not gonna sign you to another deal. Like I'm currently signed to be a mostly exclusive streamer with YouTube. I can do some events on Twitch and YouTube like I've talked about, but after this <clears> runs <throat> out, it's kind of <laughs> And I don't think they're going to sign anybody else. I don't think they're just like, hey, it's done for you, but we're going to do some other people. I don't expect that to be the case. They could surprise me. We'll see. But I think that's mostly done. I think Twitch is the same. I don't think Dan Clancy wants to be in the business of paying people millions of dollars. I think Kick, although they have billions of dollars from stake and they and they could maybe sign some more exclusive contracts, I don't think they will be doing at least a lot of it because it seems to be just kind of a money hole and a money sink. And they haven't gained much market share by signing all these people. So that whole ecosystem for creators is dead. It is gone. And I don't think it is ever coming back. And it gets a little worse for creators because I'm a little bit concerned that this could long-term impact Twitch. Is Pokey right to say that Twitch is a bit messy and it's regressing and it's not that appealing of a choice? Well, let's take a look at some recent news. Obviously, they had the layoffs. But outside of that, they also dropped this, an update to several streamer payout programs. Now, I saw some people talk about this as if it was a good thing. They basically expanded the Partner Plus program, which is allowing Chat, people to get. Chat, I think you meant that like people are people are, uh, are regressing. I think it, like um, Chat, I think the take on this chat is that people are regressing it in, in behavior on social media. That's it. Seventy thirty splits, and before they had a one hundred k cap on that seventy thirty split. That's what I they removed think, yeah. that cap. That's mostly a good thing for people who are earning more than a hundred thousand like, dollars a year. The the, the, the overall more money, consensus more of their share. Social they media behavior is brain rotten. To the Prime Gaming. Uh, subscription it's just payout getting model. worse that's all and this one's pretty fucking huge i feel like people didn't talk about this enough they've changed it so now when somebody gives you a prime sub it is a fixed rate depending on where in the world you got your amazon prime membership so if you're a north american streamer and you have someone from the u.s who uses a prime you now get a flat two dollars and 25 cents when i streamed on twitch it would just count as a sub so if i got a prime i would get 70 percent of that sub three dollars and fifty cents oh I mean, you know what chat you guys i don't get anybody because at the chat but he's wrong you guys he's actually wrong about this um, he's wrong about this. You would get a, pretty much a, a, a flat rate for Prime, but uh, but different to subs. Subs would get uh, would you would be given different amounts depending on what credit card uh, was used or what kind of payment method and from where it's at. I mean, even if you got 50-50, that would still be two dollars and fifty cents, right? And it's even worse if you have a lot of viewers who are Chat. outside. I remember some people used to like get like pay by phone or some shit or whatever. And some subs would give you like less than a buck. US. Like, I let's say this. I you this. mainly stream to people from the UK. 
you're only getting a dollar and eighty cents. Let's so let's say let's say let's say perhaps you are perhaps an e-girl streamer and you you know stream content that is generally for maybe an audience from a country who doesn't have a lot of pornography, so they like watching you know live streaming websites. Turkey, as an example, you now get nine cents per Prime, and it makes sense on paper. I think Amazon Prime in Turkey is like a dollar a month if you do the uh, the currency exchange, so they shouldn't be like hemorrhaging two dollars and fifty cents. But this is a huge fucking change. And I think most people are now going to be earning less money as a Twitch streamer because of this change in Prime. It's great for the people who are part of the Partner Plus program who are earning more than $100,000. That's a pretty small list. Most streamers aren't there, right? That's like a thousand, a couple thousand people. But out of the seven million people who go live every month, most are going to be negatively impacted. That along with a lot of people trying out YouTube because of this new non-exclusive thing that Twitch is trying to explore, I think might hurt them long term. For example, there's a lot of streamers who started streaming on YouTube who are doing really fucking well. Like Moist Critical, whose viewership has skyrocketed on YouTube. He averaged about like eight to 12,000 on Twitch. Now he averages like 15 to 25,000 on YouTube. Yeah. Doug Doug has similarly averaged about 10,000 viewers on YouTube at any given live stream. We also have Chat. Chat. Okay. Uh, guys, that's like if, if, if I'm always on TikTok, I grew up on TikTok, my TikTok has like 20 million fucking uh, uh, subscribers. I start streaming on YouTube, right? And I have like 10,000 viewers on YouTube and I go exclusive. It's streaming live on fucking TikTok, and I get like 25,000 views. I said, "Yo, dude, guys, I have way more over there." Well, no shit. It's where I'm based from. It's where my 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 big. It's where everybody knows me from. It's where I pulled from. It's it's the it's the it's the home base. Ends, who's of been watching on YouTube, they've been doing incredibly well. And even Point Crow. Why do you think? Why do you think he's doing well on YouTube? He's from YouTube. Why do you think? Why do you think doing well on YouTube? Because he's from there. It's just it's just what it is. Right now, is live streaming on YouTube to 2,500 people on Twitch. He's at about 1,800. Now, live streaming could be the meta. Like, excuse me, multi-streaming could be the meta. That, that could be the truth. And this would be great for Twitch if it was. But the reason people prefer Twitch is because, one, they have a lot more tools, so it's better as a creator to do the streaming. But most lurkers, which is the bulk of all viewers, tend to prefer YouTube. And unless Twitch offers more money via Primes, which is basically a subsidized guys, subscription guys, that... Same for Destiny. Unfortunately, I mean, it's something you guys are not going to hear in this chat. Destiny is more of a YouTuber than a Twitch streamer by size. His YouTube videos do really fucking good by size, for his subscriber size, his viewer size on YouTube is massive. It's, guys, it's, he does really good. People that say that he fell out on YouTube is wrong. He performs incredibly well on YouTube. Therefore, when he, YouTube should do as well, is what it is, like, I know what you want One, they have a lot more tools, so it's better as a creator to do the streaming. But most lurkers, which is the bulk of all viewers, tend to prefer YouTube. And unless Twitch offers more money via Primes, so that's so incre incredibly incorrect which is basically a subsidized subscription that Twitch gives to the viewers, what is the point of streaming on Twitch? Like, the culture's amazing, but if you are making more money and you get more viewers on YouTube, why will people... Because he doesn't understand it. Lurkers lurk because they also read the chat. If the chat on YouTube sucks, and it's dog shit, and it's hard to watch um, on the app and shit like that, like, it's just not what it is. Like, people have a better viewing experience when they have the chat and the stream and they lurk because they don't chat because they read the chat. That's not what YouTube offers and it's why it doesn't understand why people lurk. Stick with Twitch. So I have a bit of a prediction, all right? If Twitch keeps going down this current trend, and that's a big if, if they keep trying to cut costs, if they slash Prime even further or maybe remove it altogether, I think we're going to see a big migration from people going from Twitch over to other websites. Not necessarily YouTube. But I've looked at the numbers. Here's quarter four uh, hours watched uh, for each website. You can see Twitch had a nice December, 1.79 billion. Still the big dogs. YouTube Gaming, pretty fucking close though. At 467 million hours watched, right? Just about like a fourth of what Twitch had. Uh, Kick had a bit of a bump, 112, still there. And then what might be interesting is also Africa TV. Because Twitch is going to cut all their service in Korea, February 27th. And Africa TV is the second largest live streaming platform in Korea, so they should see a huge bump in March. That'll be interesting to see. I want to look at these stats a year from now and talk about it, but that's the changing landscape. If anyone has lost their job in esports and is watching this, I, I, hope, I hope you're doing good, man. That's fucking, that's, it's devastating what's going on right now. It's changing everywhere. Everything's changing, but it's okay. It's okay that things change. We will all uh, get through it together. I hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching. See you later. Goodbye. Yeah, uh, a, lot of, a lot of oversights here. Problem with YouTube is that, listen, listen by, by comparison of density of overall users on the website, this is YouTube and this is Twitch, right? YouTube should be able to uh, convert a lot more of their that into a, a, a live audience, right? But it can't. Why? A big reason why that is, is that this is um, 
every channel, it's, this is Twitch, it's like kind of like a big bubble and everybody's in it, in it, right? And they do pretty good at like doing that and other websites do it for streaming. YouTube, like everybody that streams is its own little island. Like to go from one island to the other is nearly impossible. If they like buy a ticket via a boat or some shit, like get a fucking plane ticket, go underground or some shit. Like there's one with YouTube is that yes, they have a number of live uh, viewers and streamers, cool, but Everybody is so separate. There's no discoverability. There's no directories. Um, like, dude, it's just what it is. And this is graph theory. Um, Hamiltonian and Euler's uh, graph theory. Bing, 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 bing. Boom.